This is the reason it is so hard to understand the way a jet engine works, even when someone tries to explain it to you. Still don't get it? It's because there are barely any visible moving parts and the element being acted upon and its resulting force is invisible. But by the end of the video, you will understand how jet engines work and be able to explain it to anyone, even a toddler. Okay, so let's break it down for a minute and use a simpler approach to force, which is defined as a push or pull effect on an object resulting from that object's interaction with another object. This is pretty simple to understand. If you look carefully, you will see the principle applied multiple times starting with the Bob's letters. There's the object, which is the bobsled, the other object influencing the bobsled, the men, and you might have missed it, but there's also the ground, which the men use to push against to help them move the sled forward. One object, the men, pushes against another object, the ground, which gives them that force back to push the bobsled forward as a result. Okay, so what does this have to do with jet engines? Come on, make it make sense. The men are pushing the sled, but how does the jet engine push an airplane down the runway? And how does it create this force if it's not contacting the ground? And this is where we all get confused and call it a day. I quit! I quit! I quit! Now let's take a look at the propeller and examine how this lines up with our force theory. If you know anything about internal combustion, it's the concept behind how car engines work and the piston engine on an aircraft is no different. When the key is turned in the ignition, the engines roll over and the four stroke cycle begins. Okay, so this is a pretty simple concept to understand because we can see the force being applied upon and reacted to. It's all mechanical and everything is physically touching, but you still find it hard to connect the dots in a jet engine, right? But remember that invisible force I mentioned earlier? What is it though? It's air, or wind. Using our bobsled analogy and combining it with the piston engine, we can start to create a clearer picture in our minds. What confuses most people when trying to understand the concept of a jet engine is that we look at the flow of air through the engine in a linear way. And while this is the case, it pays to understand the components and stages of operation first. The jet engine concept is explained as suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. Yes, air is sucked into the front of the engine, compressed and blown out of the back, but let's refer to our bobsled analogy again. Without thinking about it at all, we are prone to believe that the man pushing the bobsled is where the force comes from initially. But the reality is that before the man can influence the direction of the object, they themselves must first put force into the ground to start themselves in motion, and then transfer that energy to the bobsled. This is how they overcome inertia. Or in other words, in this case, moving an object from a standstill and getting it up to speed. I really hope that makes sense to you because it, it actually took me a while to connect these dots myself. In the piston engine, when air and fuel are mixed and delivered to the piston cylinder, compressed and then ignited, this controlled explosion pushes the piston down like the man's leg pushing against the ground, subsequently turning the crankshaft which is connected to the propeller at the front of the engine generating enough force to move the aircraft forward before the wings which create lift take over. So here we go. In a jet engine aircraft, the pilot flips the corresponding switches in the cockpit to start the whining motor you hear when you board your flight. It's called the APU or auxiliary power unit, which is a smaller engine located at the rear of most airplanes. And this is its exhaust outlet. This mini engine provides compressed air that is shot to the engine's air starter which kickstarts the transfer gearbox that transmits this power to the engine. The part of the engine that it interacts with is known as the N2 core. As the N2 builds up, the pilot monitors this from the cockpit instruments. At about 20% N2 rotation, fuel is introduced into the combustion chamber. The igniters then fire up the fuel and air mixture, which causes the engine temperature to rise. In most jet engines, this temperature is sensed at the turbine stages or exhaust and is called the exhaust gas temperature or EGT. As fuel is first introduced, there is a sharp rise in EGT due to the presence of excess fuel in the combustion chamber compared to air. 
Less air means less cooling. As the engine accelerates, more fuel is introduced, which progressively increases the EGT. At some point, the engine reaches a self-sustaining speed at which the engine can continue to accelerate without assistance from the starter motor. And this ends the starter procedure, AKA overcoming inertia. Whew, that sucked in air has to pass over the stationary blades at the front of the engine known as stator blades that straighten and direct the air into the low pressure core. As the blades and surrounding space get smaller and smaller, the air becomes more compressed, building up pressure and forcing it to heat up. It's sort of like when you put your finger over the nozzle of a syringe and push it. The air desperately needs to escape for some form of relief, but before it can do that, it is ignited in the combustion chamber. So think about it, extremely hot and pressurized air dying to escape that is then lit on fire? It's essentially a controlled super energy burn. But that's not all. Remember now, the engine is in a self-sustaining cycle and needs to replace the expelled air that just exited. So as that super fast air blows out the back of the engine, before it exits through the nozzle, it passes over the lower pressure turbine, spinning it rapidly. This turbine shaft is connected to the fan at the front of the engine and the cycle repeats itself. Now go and explain it to your three-year-old and be the smart parent that they think you are.